Okay, we are recording and live streaming when you are ready, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to call this special meeting of the Isabella County Board of Commissioners to order. Stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, a roll call, please. Commissioner Hutchinson? Here. Commissioner Embry? Here. Commissioner Jalzinski? Here. Commissioner Engler? Here. Commissioner Marino? Here. Commissioner Sweeney? Here. Commissioner Holt? Here. All present, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Up next would be approval of the agenda. We'll start the meeting with general public comments, uh, and then we'll go into the what we've named the goal setting session. Uh, I think kind of because that's what we've done in the past. We've had a goal setting session early in the year. This particular one will be a little more of a budget overview meeting. Um, uh, the Vice Chairman Jalazinski and Commissioner Embry and myself and the administrator and the deputy administrator um, have been meeting with department heads and elected officials and trying to figure out uh, how to go forward. So that's what we'll be presenting today. Kind of a, a high level overview of that. We realize there's four commissioners that have not been part of that uh, discussion, and that's uh, partly what this meeting is about. But anyway, so we'll do that, and then we'll have another another opportunity for general public comments, and then announcements, and then adjournment. So, is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved, Marino. Support Hutchinson. Been moved and supported. All those in favor, say aye. All right. Very good. We have an agenda. And we'll start out with general public comment. Anyone for general public comment? Right up here, sir. Good afternoon, commissioners. Elected officials and department heads, I see some familiar faces here. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Dave Patterson. I've lived in Lincoln Township for the last 36 years. I had the privilege of serving the people of Isabel <clears throat> County for 33 years with the Sheriff's Office. <clears throat> the people at the Sheriff's Office are some of the finest, most dedicated people I've ever met. How'd we get here? I keep hearing in the community that this was mismanagement, incompetence, etc. One editorial in the Morning Sun newspaper was misleading it, or at least confusing. That then went viral on social media. Next thing I know, I have vote no on 38% tax increase signs popping around my house on campaign sites. I kept waiting to hear from the county, but only heard that the information was on the Isabella County website. I went to the site with all the pie charts, numbers. It's confusing to say the least. Isabella County needs to do a much better job of getting the word out. You may want to consult a public relations firm that handles these things to assist you. I also heard no one has taken responsibility for the shortfall. I don't believe it's incompetence. The slew of unfortunate events, COVID, three years high inflation, a lack of revenue coming from property tax home sales. But again, we haven't heard exactly why from this board this needs to be explained because perception is reality. My main reason for being here is to encourage you to put a road patrol millage on the August ballot. I know you are worried that it might confuse voters with the county renewal millage on the ballot. This is where you all need to do better job of explaining exactly what is on the ballot. When asked if the last millage increases would keep the sheriff's and the sit uh, office, the citizens heard nothing as to how the money would be spent. If you don't have a road patrol millage request, 
and you wait until November, you will lose several great veteran employees. You don't gain that knowledge overnight in this profession. <clears throat> a good example is Montcalm County. As I'm sure some of you know, they struggle with the road patrol millage, lost their road patrol, finally got it back. And they've tried for several years now to get their numbers back up and they haven't been able to. There's not the people going into law enforcement like there was 30 years ago. There's still six to nine positions down. Public safety has been an issue down there for years since the millage went through. And it's, it's a decade of building back what you're gonna lose. <clears throat> so keep that in mind. The Sheriff's Office, for as long as I can remember, will give back unused budget funds each year to the county, showing they are fiscally conservative with the people's money. Also, the Sheriff's Office averages between two and 300 incidents a week. This is no, there is no other agency can even come close to picking up this slack or do more for less money than the Sheriff's Office. For my friends that live in the city of Mount Pleasant, you heard from some leaders that the village wouldn't affect the city residents. You go to Walmart, you go to Menards, Applebee's, do your loved ones travel outside the city roads? you know, that are policed by the sheriff's <laughs> office. Your kids travel, school buses, go to sporting yeah. events outside. All this is patrolled and protected by the sheriff's office. So it certainly does affect you and your safety in this community. Finally, I would like to address Mears pension funding. It is only funded at 74% the last I checked. It is recommended that it be funded at 80 to 85%. You need to take care of the county's retirees, some of which wrote blank checks to the citizens run towards gunfire and the most horrific crime scenes and are willing to pay the ultimate sacrifice for the county and city residents. And believe me, these images never get out of your mind. Do the right thing. Put rope patrol millage on August ballot so the people can decide. Let us decide if we want to keep the sheriff's office services to keep our community safe. And for God's sake, get the word out long before election day. Answer, set, answer criticisms immediately and use all avenues of communication from social media, <clears throat> local paper, TV, radio, and not just the county website. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> what else for general public comment? I'm David McGuire. I'm from the city of Mount Pleasant. Um, last, I think it was your last meeting uh, in the work <clears throat> session. I attended your meeting. I watched the work session on YouTube. But uh, Commissioner Embry made a suggestion that uh, you know there were going to be lots of cuts, and that you folks maybe wanted to take part in that by cutting your salaries by 15 percent. I think it was, which seemed like a nice gesture. I, however. First of all, hear the whole, my whole comment before you shut your ears to what I'm going to say, okay? Because you're not going to like part of it. But I think if you listen to it, I think it makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> right now, uh, the seven county commissioners receive health care. Well, can receive health care. I guess some do, some don't. Um, if you don't take it, my understanding is you get $100 a paycheck. Co uh, costs something over $100,000 to provide health care to the county commissioners. No offense to anybody sitting here, but my observation is several people are probably uh, at least eligible for Medicare. Um, and my friends tell me that Medicare supplements <clears throat> cost somewhere around $200 a month. If you folks, for the next commission, because I know you said you can't do it for this one, but if for the next commission, you eliminated the health care and just everybody got the $200 a month, you'd still save like 90 some thousand or right around $90,000 out of the budget. And I know the other argument that I heard was maybe people won't run because, you know, if we cut the salaries or if we do this, if somebody decides not to run for county commission because they're not going to receive the health care, we, in my humble opinion, we probably don't want them running for county commission. So that's just a suggestion. I wanted to bring it up. If somebody was going to suggest that, I apologize for stealing your thunder, uh, but I want to throw it out there. I think, it may, I mean, from the sounds of it, you guys got a lot of money to cut and there's a lot of people getting damaged. 
that almost sounds like it wouldn't hurt very many people because like I said, there's a way to make it so everybody's whole. But thank you very much for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else for general public comment? Anyone online? We have lots of folks online. I don't see anyone with their hand up. We have PA Barbary joining us, Drain Commissioner Willoughby, Court Administrator Curtis, COA Director Crawford, and MSU Regional Director Eric Kowalski. Just so you all know who's on, on the Zoom, but no one has okay. their hands up. Mr. Chairman. All right, we will move right along and dive right into the... Uh, Item number five for goal setting session. And like I said, this is going to be kind of a budget overview. Uh, keep in mind that everything is still <laughs> fluid. Um, we talked to electeds and department heads, but that is kind of just the beginning of it. Uh, there's still conversations we need to have with, with most of those folks, with all of those folks. Um, and that will be That'll be happening over the next few weeks. Um, take it from there. Sure. So it's suggested um, maybe one place to for us to start today was to start with the forecast from a few months ago, right? What what kind of led led into us getting here? So if you could just distribute that among your table and among your table, I think I might have enough for everyone. Once it's given, all right. So this, remember, remember this. Remember, this is what led us here. Not because there's been corruption or malfeasance or anything nefarious, but because we started to forecast and use this tool and saw. That if we keep spending like we've been spending, we will soon run out of money, right? So that was the whole impetus that the board chose to put the 2.5 mil request on the February 27th ballot. The, the thought at the beginning was we adopted a budget that used uh, a lot of fund balance in the current year, right? To maintain current levels of spending. And we said, as a board, let the voters decide in February if we want to maintain that current level of operations <clears throat> or become a leaner form of government. Right? We know that the millage request failed. And so in the ensuing weeks, as Chairman Hope described, the finance commissioners, along with Chairman Hope, myself, and Deputy Administrator Controller Melissa Franquist, have been meeting with all of the departments. And I think very, very aggressive schedule, but um, believe me, no one wants to know more than us what what this is going to look like, but we've been diligent to this end. We've, we've got a, a lot to work through. So the forecast that the commissioners are looking at in front of them, starting in our current year, um, we were utilizing a tremendous amount of fund bands. We adopted our current current um, budget using over $5 million of fund balance to balance the budget, right? And we know we couldn't, we couldn't continue that. In this forecast, you'll see that fund balance unreserved becomes negative in fiscal 25. That fiscal year starts this October. If, if you do some quick math, you'll, you'll see that overall fund balance becomes negative in fiscal 27 if we kept doing what we were doing, right? We identified prior to this forecast, we identified an operational shortfall of $4 million a year. And the when we built into the forecast, the asbestos abatement and the ensuing wage study increases presumed to, 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 to do some increases, that's what led to this forecast of 
um, essentially $6 million annual deficit. Right? So I just wanted to remind everyone, and it's a good point to come back to why we started this whole conversation. First, we were looking for, for $4 million. The, the extra um, from the asbestos led to really us looking at six. So we started these meetings. And um, again, I'll just uh, pass this out to the commissioners. We'll start a discussion. This is this is by department, the amount of savings we were able to identify. So usually in the county budget, what we would be doing about this time of year is taking um, the current budget, looking at our trend, and either increasing or lowering that budget. That's traditionally, that's how county budget budgeting happens. And and that that was a little short-sighted, I think, for what we needed to do. Um, what the exercise we 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 undertook was what we call zero-based budgeting. So instead of starting with the current budget or last year's <clears throat> budget, we started at zero. Right? And we said, well, we've got to have a trial court. Let's build that in. Right? We've got to have a treasurer. We've got to have a deputy treasurer. Let's build those in. And we literally started to build in mandated services until we said, I think that's everything we have to do. And we actually had, we did that with expenditures and then we did that with revenues. And we actually had a little bit left over from the mandates, which was a little surprising until we <clears throat> underwent that exercise. We didn't even know that. So what you have in front of you is a by department um, change. It's what their current amended budget is and what the zero base budget is showing that that department might be. Various amounts of either cuts or maybe taking on additional duties <clears throat> for, for every department. Well, some of these things, as we go through departments, will take time to talk about specifics. Um, I know right off the top as a board of commissioners, and boy, there, there might be a little public comment if we didn't explain this one going up a total of $44,000, right? So let's talk about that. And Melissa, I know I'm probably going to need your help on the details, but somewhere in a zero-based budget, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about computers just for a second, and how we normally would budget for computers. Normally in the general fund budget, right, we have we have our departments broken out and our, our computers, I, I think quite, quite rightfully right-sized, are on a five-year rotation. Every five years, um, we, we get a new computer in, in these departments. So think of any given budget year in the county you, you might have, as it turns out, close to $100,000 in computer purchases if all of those are, are on a five-year schedule. So in a zero-based budget, how do you build that in? You're not going to pick and choose departments to build that in. Right? At least that's what we chose not to do at this point. You, you choose a, a placekeeper in your budget, right? And then you build in, a, in a, a, a big dollar amount. We'll work on the details before budget adoption, but right now we need a placekeeper. Board of Commissioners Department is the placekeeper for a lot of things. Right? One of them is, is the $100,000 a year. Actually, I think it's 90. Mm -hmm. So keep me on track, Melissa, please, if, if, I, if I go off. Uh, computers, about a, a $90,000. In addition to that, um, we know that our MERS pension costs go up, um, or they change. I shouldn't say go up, but they change every year. So how are we going to account for that in a zero-based budget? We took an addition and we built that into the Board of Commissioners um, Department. Last year and current year, we have... Um, things maybe built into the Board of Commissioners Department that are going away. We might have had the Board of Commissioners AV audiovisual. So that, that would be coming out. So you're saying, well, how can you add 90 for computers? And, and I think we added $150,000 as a representative additional defined benefit payment. 
that doesn't add up to 44. There were some things in the, yes, in the Board of Commissioners that are taken out, those one-time things. Well, so is there other, I know we added a 10% increase in healthcare costs in the zero-based budget. That's something we do every year when we start out our budget process, right? We assume a 10% increase in healthcare for budget purposes. And then maybe when renewal comes, we get, we get better news. So we dug in and said, what, what might a 10% increase in healthcare okay. look like representatively for general fund? And I believe we built that into the Board of Commissioners Department. What am I missing? Am I, am I thinking of, is there anything in there that we lumped together that I might? Uh, normal step increases step for increase. those who Thank are you. not not necessarily wage increase, well, it's a wage increase, but if they're on the scale, at a year hire. two, yep, a new hire before they get to the top out at five years, any step increases for those newer hires were not at the top of the scale yet. Perfect, because as you might imagine, the zero-based budget presumes no increase from current salaries. There's no cost of living allowance built into the zero-based budget, right? So how do you account for someone who's maybe a year one employee still making their way up that scale? We did build in an amount so that those employees are still working working their way towards the top of their wage scale. Thank you. Anything else? I, I, perfect. Thank you for that um, that conversation. So overall, an increase in the Board of Commissioners Department, not because anyone's getting an increase or extra benefits, but just because we use that department as a catch-all, if you will, for some of those other changes that are, it doesn't make sense right now to go to the detail to build them into where they're ultimately will be. And I would say, you know, the zero base we're working towards is, is thought to be in October 1, you know, that we're working on fiscal 25 budget, essentially. Um, by law, this board would have to adopt that by the end of September. Um, our budget calendar shows a presentation of the budget in August, public hearing at your first meeting in September, and then adoption second meeting in September. So I just wanna lay out that timeline of the fiscal 25 budget. Obviously, we wanna know what's happening well before that, but that's the timeline for when things will be <clears throat> approved by the board and then still fluid throughout the year as you're able to do budget amendments. Administration, this might be one of those that has a little extra, a little extra discussion involved with it. Um, administration is seeing about a 25% decrease and that is more of a restructure than anything. Right now, this board has adopted what's known as the Controller Act. And so you have an administrator controller and that there's a Michigan compiled law that, that gives that um, position certain duties and powers. And you entered that 25-ish years ago, I think, um, by two-thirds vote. That's what it takes to adopt the Controller Act. When you did that, the general ledger function of the county, including payroll and accounts payable, comes under the administration umbrella, right? And you've heard, you've heard people say when that moved, you, you took an employee from one department and you brought that, that general ledger over or you took an employee, you brought payroll over, that type of thing. So for decades now, that's been operating under, under administration. And this process has brought that to light, right? Is that where the general ledger belongs? So we've, we've started to have these conversations, what it takes for this board to move away from an administrator controller relationship back to administrator is a two thirds vote you have to remove your administrator control. No way around it, feels pretty icky, but you, you have to remove the person sitting here. Um, the person sitting here has a contract for administrator controller services through the end of December. And so you have to address that. In that contract, it does say that if you terminate me without cause, I, I have a six month severance. So we all know what I make, it's 60 plus thousand dollars to to fire me at that at this point. 
at any point. So come July, you're going to get quite a deal to keep me on, actually. I have said, because the person sitting here, as many of you know, has uh, now 87 years of public service in Isabella County among my immediate family. I love this county. I don't always think you're going to have someone sitting here who would be amenable to the change. But if this is what is best for the county, I'm going on record saying that I will open up that contract and, and change the terms and, and walk away from that uh, severance, severance pay. Okay. So I want you to understand that. I, that's how much I believe in what we're doing at the table here. Okay. So what does that look like? Um, if I am not an administrator controller and the deputy is not an, a deputy administrator controller, then, then what you have is an administrator and you should have a contract with someone to perform administrator duties. Right? And the, the, the conversations in these meetings have been administrator isn't a mandated position, neither is a deputy, but those are two positions that these discussions have led to building, building those back in. I want to be upfront with the other four commissioners who weren't in those meetings. You could be Gladwin County, right? Or the commissioners can go and do the work. The three, the three people in the three commissioners in those meetings said, no, we would like to have an administrator doing this work for the county. But understand that's something that was built back in. I'd like to point out that. Uh, this change was not brought about by your performance in any way, shape, or form. This has to do, in my opinion, with accountability, okay? Concentrating all of the decision-making power within our county with one position, <clears throat> to me, does not make good business sense. So I was the one that really pushed this idea of moving the controller away from our county administrator. One, because again, the accountability factor, but also two, we have a lot going on in this county. And I feel that with that controller function under her uh, responsibility, that she is unable to do the job that we need her to do 100%. She's having to work 60 some hours a week along with her assistant deputy controller now that's a problem for me we need as a board someone who's on their game 100 percent of the time and be able to give us her full for the things that we need taken care of so i i feel that by doing this we are going to help create a situation where we eliminate the potential for how we got here to ever happen again because we're going to have an elected official as a treasurer handling the general ledger and also being responsible for the audit. That those two, that one particular aspect of the control of the general ledger and control of the audit, that person will ultimately re report to us. And the, <clears throat> as their elected official, they report and have to answer to the residents. So I think that is very, very important in this process. So again, I want to make that clear. This is not based on performance. I want her to be able to do more of what she does because she does a fantastic job, in my opinion, in the things that I have entrusted her to do and things I've asked of her and uh, Miss Melissa, I couldn't ask for anything more. So again, I, I want to, this process that we're in, I want to do a quick overview. This process is we got a problem. We're Today we're talking about 40,000 foot overview of how we're going to fix that problem. This, what we're talking about right now is how we keep it from ever happening again. All right, so I'm hoping that you guys will consider that recommendation to move the controller function to the treasurer, ultimately to the treasurer, and AP. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but I get to help oh, myself. Yeah, yeah. But uh, these, this, the reason we have a $307,000 change in the county administrator is because of one, the controller function and the people that go with it, as well as accounts payable and uh, payroll moving to the clerk's office. Right. So again, treasurer's office. No. Well, so but, let's let's talk about yeah. that. So okay. essentially, what that would mean, yes, is 
the, the, this board, is, if my understanding, this board by resolution does this, right? If you remove your administrative controller, <laughs> then by resolution, you spell out what you would like to happen, right? Then you spell out, we're gonna have an administrator. What the discussion has been this far is, has been to place the general ledger in the elected treasurer's office and place the accounts payable and payroll functions in the county clerk's office. Now the savings comes from those departments not, not being added staff in order to, to perform those duties. Although we recognize in the treasurer's department that, that there would need to be um, the accountant position that is um, vacant, if you will, in the admin right now, that position in the zero base is moved over to the treasurer's along with all the, the costs associated with the audit. In, in contractual services. That's part of that move as well. This has been discussed with both of those departments in their in their budget meetings, at least again, you know, as that initial um, high level of something that we're considering doing. Thank you for saying that because of, of anything happening, but just to we feel best chance for success for the county moving forward to have more of a more of a three-legged stool. Checks and balances. So, how does that the treasurer's uh, <clears throat> responsibility for the audit? Who is who is the if there's a problem within the audit? Whose responsibility is that to make corrections within the audit? That lies solely with the. Treasurer or is the board of commissioners still responsible for because if the auditor is reporting to the treasurer, I'm just trying to understand the the changes as far as responsibility. Well, the auditor doesn't report to the treasurer. I mean, the audit is still a, a third He's, party, yeah. you know, outside function. Um, management is responsible for changes in the audit. Audit. Uh, the, audit and so either that that might be treasurer, that might be admin, that might be any given department that's got, you know, something, uh, some whatever, whatever's being audited, it could be, could be anyone in management responsible for, for um, implementing it. Ultimately, the board of commissioners. Okay. Are, so he's the only change would be he's the one that is administrating. Administ oh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still a still a outside third party <clears throat> check on, same, same on uh, all the yeah on the financial okay. reporting. Mm -hmm. And you would suggest that the clerk take on accounts payable and payroll without additional personnel. Correct. Like that's possible. Correct. Okay. Correct. And again, the, the, the guys of this will give it a try. If, uh, if we're not getting cut, we're getting additional duties. What's the, what's well, the, the general thought of? Of that, right? And, and gonna, talks with if, if we give additional duties to people because we're cutting people, as in they're taking on more responsibilities, are their job description changing and their wages going up? Yes, and we did build that because in. Yes. we'll be back in our 1920 where yes. we're having problems with personnel. Yes, we did. Um, we, we did take be... that into account. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for coming. We kept you in mind, sir. <laughs> you were there in spirit. Yes, you were. That's a that's a pretty big that's a that's a pretty big one to come out of the gate with, mm -hmm. I suppose. But um, that's that's the flavor of what we're looking at. Um, any other questions about admin? Moving right along, county clerk's department, you don't see much of a change, right? Down just about it's about 1.8 percent again because they're not they're not experiencing staff cuts that would lead to a savings in their department. They're supporting another department who could cut, and they can take on those duties. Um, what you're seeing, the decreases there, and county clerk are some of the, the some of the similar decreases that we made across all. General fund departments. I think that's important just to to talk to talk about some of the things that all departments 
Um, all departments felt these cuts and then in these meetings had to basically justify if they needed more, right? Um, some of those things we zeroed out dues and subscriptions. We zeroed out training. We zeroed out travel. Um, we took office supplies down to $500 for each department. If you needed more than that in a year, you had to, you had to justify it. Um, meals and lodging, I might have already said that. It's gone. Cell phones, gone, unless you could justify why your department needed them. Paid interns, gone. Overtime, gone. And that was across the board in our general fund departments. And it's important to talk about that. So uh, dues and subscriptions, they include software contracts? No, software and software licenses is a different uh, line item in our in our budgets, but we did talk specifically with departments you know, about those, but it, it did not cut into those contracts. Okay. Well, I have a question. Would that be like uh, MAC or anything like that? It would. Or um, Michigan Nico. Recycling Center? Right. So we these cuts were only considered for general fund. We didn't we didn't say to Parks and Rec or Commission on Aging or MERV or inspections or 911, you have to cut your dues and subscriptions. Those are still occurring. This is this is general fund only. We felt that in this time those other funds would need to support general funds so much that to 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 cut into them didn't make any sense at this time. Um, moving down the line, you can see some savings um, in each department information management down 8%. Can you go over any <clears throat> one that where cuts are not what you would consider general cuts like you described for kind of click? Like, so if the information management, if that 8% is more than just general cuts, I'd like to know. So you mean instead of oh. kind of going through each one? If oh, you could, can go through each one, okay. but uh, it sounded like she was going to skip through. And I just wanted to make sure that we're hitting on anything that's not a general. Right. And for, for the four of you, uh, me, Doc, uh, Madam Interim Director, has made herself available to go through these line by lines. Mm -hmm. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is just a general overview of the cuts that we felt that we wanted to recommend to the full board. So uh, specific cuts, <clears throat> specific uh, conversations. She's made herself available. Get with her. She'll sit down with you and go through the whole thing so that you have the understanding uh, that we have. Okay. Couple of reasons for that. One is that this is all still fluid. Hmm. Uh, like I said earlier, we're still talking to electives and department heads and still trying to hammer this out. Number two, um, we don't wanna identify specific positions because we're not 100% sure which positions those are and those folks have not been properly notified That'll have to be a. Uh, we don't want people to find out at a public <clears throat> meeting that their position is being eliminated. So. Are you, so we're not going to hear about a department that will lose personnel in in a general sense. You know, I think as you that. look at these numbers, you'll be able to tell whether whether that involves personnel or not specifically because you asked about information management that that's a that's an interesting one and I public knowledge has been talked about at a at a at a board meeting certainly our IT director is retiring right and so the the savings from having that topped out person to a new hire there's some savings there and so that's part of what you're seeing savings and then they're okay budget there. So that does go beyond those, you know, five hundred dollars for office supplies, no travel, that that type of thing. I don't know that we want to get into that level of detail on everything. So, so essentially we 
we have a retirement, we're, we're, we're replacing that position and not filling our the replacement position. We're filling that one, which we've, we've are, we're already cracked to, we're, we're you know, filling the management position, but, but not, not the at the same level, designer. right? It's, it's, are you filling the web designer position? Let's see. Yes. It's, these are, you know, details. We I, really have I, no, I'm, I got a dog sitter until five. And <laughs> so, uh, yes. I, the more information the, I can get. Sure. I want. This is this is one uh, function of the county that is not uh, really w probably should have additional people. <laughs> Most counties have more than two people. We've been very fortunate to have a uh, long serving uh, director and a very qualified uh, uh, assistant there. So we're looking to just to continue the function and and not to look at any additional cuts. All right, so we're okay, so we'll, we'll, to... we'll be looking to fill the second position. That will, thanks. Appreciate yeah, we were not Sorry. we we did not discuss cutting it beyond the the two positions. Okay, thanks. Good conversation. Um, you'll see one of the next department um, in this zero base example. What we've already talked about county treasurer is actually would be actually be going up, and that is is with that shift from the accountant out of admin department into treasurer's department, the shift from some of those contracted services, the cost of, you know, the cost of our auditors that would then fall under the, the county treasurer's um, budget. In that scenario, just so you're aware, administrator would still, would still do the county budget. Right? That's, that function still is an administration budget audit separate in case you, um, equalization department is the next one and you'll see a, a change in there we're trying to work through what uh, what that might look like what it might look like to prioritize uh, prioritize privatize that department um, those are just conversations we're had we're having again up in the air we really don't know Contingency, loud and clear during these meetings, there was discussion about bringing the contingency fund back into the budget. It's something that we got rid of a couple of years ago because at, at budget time, when we went to balance the budget, it seemed like that was always the first thing. Well, we need contingency out, it went. And so then what happens is through the year, anytime a good idea comes up that's not budgeted, we'll just... We'll just no, we'll just take it out of fund balance, and you can, and you can do that, and you've got fund balance to do that with. But unless you have a an amount built into your general fund to take that out of, it's just it's just kind of this ominous number. You don't you don't know how much that's totaled, right? If you've got an amount contingency amount in your budget, you can see you're drawing down it. You can see oh that's gone. You can see we need to replenish, or you can see maybe we never touched it. I can see even the last few years that we did have contingency in the budget, we still went to fund balance and took, we didn't take it out of contingency sometimes because it was too, too large or we didn't have enough in contingency. It had to come from fund balance. But I want to say something else about the uh, contingency. 227 may seem like a, a large amount of money compared to what we've done in the past, but we're going through a process. We're, we're becoming leaner. Uh, in terms of county government, we're making a lot of changes throughout our whole structure, and we don't know those impacts, every impact that we're going to be facing. There, there may be something, oops, we overlooked this dollar amount, and that's going to come out of the contingency. We have a wage study that doesn't have any dollars budgeted. We may have to adjust some of those positions that are so lowly paid to keep quality people on. That's going to have to come out of contingency. So I don't think we're going to end up with that amount of money in our contingency in the final uh, final budget. These are just a recommendation at this point. And if we find that somebody uh, wants to maintain something that we're recommending that maybe is going by the wayside, that's going to have to be made up someplace else. It's going to be a balancing act. We want this. What do you want to give up? And that contingency is going to disappear real quick. Was there... Um specific thoughts on um, other than the fact that we're going to need more as a specific items that you were think built into the uh contingency fund to make it two hundred twenty seven thousand dollars no that was just what was left over okay yeah. just left over like 
from the these from exact the, changes that you're seeing right here okay. from what 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 the five of us felt should be included in a zero based budget i think okay. we had about 2.8 million dollars that was not attached to a mandated service mm -hmm. and so as we built that budget back that's just a remaining amount that we still have available right, to a zero okay which is now Thank 227 <laughs> quickly dissipated yeah that's mm -hmm. how quick absolutely so contingency going up at least 100 percent, right because we didn't have one before um elections department clerk lux um you're the hero going down on 70 almost 75 percent but obviously that's just due, due to timing right and mm -hmm. we're in we're in the big election year next year um next fiscal thing so we will have a november election so we had to figure out in the zero base again, kind of like that whole computers thing. What what do you build into a zero base that that makes sense for an ongoing annual amount? The rest of it gets uh, reimbursed for the most part. Um, <clears throat> facilities down um, about twenty percent. Um, this was um, one of those uh, one of those departments where we thought we were pretty smart and maybe we could just eliminate the department and contract out. Commissioner Marino, I think you know different. <laughs> that look on your face tells me you knew that wasn't maybe the best idea. And certainly working with the department, we learn it, it, it's, it's better for the county if we have facility staff performing those functions. We're not gonna save a dime by picking up the phone when we have a plumbing problem. Right. We're just not. Um, so that was a really good, really good discussion um, in those in that part. Port building costs, that's actually a function of facilities. And that is down a, a seven, almost eight percent. That was more of just looking at janitorial <clears throat> supplies right, and kind of right sizing, right sizing those those budgets, supplies type of thing. Central services, that's where we pay all of our postage. It's an interesting way we do this, but it's all in one department and um, it is trending down a little bit and we feel maybe the cost of postage will come down. Um, We've we've lowered that from 120 to 100 thousand in the zero base budget <clears throat> based on trend. Jury board, this is not where we are making up any any um, any amount of financial shortfall. These are these are really small amounts. We're talking about 2,900 dollars for the year for jury board per diems. But one thing that did come out in these meetings is maybe these boards that we pay per diems to meet quarterly versus monthly. Something something pretty simple, right? And most of these boards do have the ability, and they all do, have the ability to hold a special meeting if there was something that came up that couldn't last, couldn't wait, couldn't hold for, for a couple of months, right? So that's all good. So, Great. One of those, one of those maybe um, not so impactful impacts. But, but it's still, it's a lot of these maybe small dollar amounts but again, it really sheds light on the extent to which we went. We looked at everything. We turned out every single stone to see where, where we could find money. Because again, when you're trying to find $6 million, every little bit helps. And I think, I think that's important to point out here. While there may be a lot of little amounts. No, no amount too small. No, that's right. Mm -hmm. So the next several departments have to do with um, trial court, right? We have the, the, the main <clears throat> trial court department and then you've got your specialty courts, Swift and Sure, adult court, um, adult drug court, juvenile drug court. How, how your relationship works with the trial court because they are a separate <clears throat> entity from the county is that you are their funding unit and you give them an amount right, to work within. And so you can see um, the, the change to the trial court budget and the amount that we've suggested to 
trial court administrator and chief judge James, could they, could they find this amount now either increased revenues, decreased expenses, however, however they can come up with that. You as a board don't get to say no travel, no dues, $500 office supplies to the trial court. Right? You, you, you get to give them a budget amount and, and as long as they're able to maintain serviceable levels, they need to operate within that amount. Uh, I just have one comment on that. It seems like there is changes <laughs> coming down in the state that might might help, like funding on child care or different things like that. So you can really uh, uh, really advocate for those changes in a more drastic way at this time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Certainly impacts us. And, mm -hmm. and uh, trial court is certainly... Um, a fantastic partner in helping us identify how it can work, how we can take advantage of those changes, right? How it can work better for us here. Prosecuting attorney's office you'll see is down um, just about 9%. Managed assigned counsel. This is, don't think about this as public defenders. Right. This is not this is not your public defender. These are the the managed assigned counsel attorneys for the public the, for the cases that the pub, your public defender cannot take on your abuse, your neglect, mm -hmm. your juvenile cases. Sure. Yeah. So we pay mm -hmm. for that portion still through your general fund. At first, we were going to bring that down drastically, but looking at the trend, um, it's, I think it's one of those things <clears throat> that can can come up and down, but in a zero base. We we have to be conservative because if if the expense is there, we have to cover it. Again, we're looking at current amended budget dollars to the zero base budget. Right. So now we're down to the sheriff's department. Um, this uh, is sorry. To, oh, sure. To back up just real quick. Um, so the just confirm the the prosecuting attorney eight percent eight point eight. That's, that would be the senior prosecutor that we haven't re currently filled from August or wherever? It could it could be. Um, specifically, I, I don't know if PA has had conversations with his staff, so I don't I don't I don't want to talk about any specific An pos unfilled position. position. Um, Sheriff's Department is next, <clears throat> and I wanted to, you know, point out, remember, they do have the, the $4.8 million radio tower. Remember, it was not a one-year project, right? So in our current budget, $3.1 million of the Sheriff's budget is <clears throat> towards that radio tower project. Okay, so right off the bat, you have to take 3.1 out of the, out of the, the current um, 6.8 million, right? That's not what we budget for Sheriff's Department on an ongoing basis. More like 3.7. You know, so the, ch the change, the dollar amount change, that affects that too. So instead of being 5,453,000, it's really approximately $2.3 million reduction. That is a good point. Um, and then that would change that percentage too. Correct. Mm -hmm. So that's not seven. That percentage okay. is not correct. Okay. And so the percentage is great. It's very large in the sheriff's department. Um, again, we're not we're not talking about specific positions, but um, and we don't like to make assumptions. But I think there's a pretty clear assumption that can be drawn from the dollar amount there. And the um, three point seven million for the radio, or three point one million for the radio tower, remind people that that's paid by the state, right. and that's why we're talking about that as correct. Twenty percent reimbursed. Yes. yes. I just want to say. You know, we can maybe we don't want to say it, 
but we only have few dollars devoted to mandated services. And uh, the Sheriff's Department has a big portion of that in the road patrol. And we can't come to a balanced budget without impacting that service. There's not one of the seven commissioners around this table that wants to see public safety uh, go away in this county. We just, we have to, we have to balance the budget and we're gonna say road patrol is probably on the hook of, of elimination. And we've had person talk about uh, a millage and I've had some emails. There's been a lot of reported in the paper, uh, but we just came off of a millage request that was 2.5. And we did our best to educate the public. There's a lot of people that are hurting right now, do not wanna pay additional uh, taxes, property taxes for anything. And we got that message loud and clear. And are we gonna just come back and do the same thing all over again and have it uh, come down to a defeat? We've gotta think uh, logically and, and smart on if we ever go for another millage uh, and when we're gonna go for it. This is something that's important to the residents of the county. Um, but as one commissioner, unless there's a, really an advocacy group out there that is seeking uh, a road patrol millage and is willing to work towards it, which we can't, we can't advocate for it as, as county commissioners. We're elected officials. We gotta remain silent on yes or no. All we can do is try to educate and we did the best we could, but just, just talking to the sheriff, the prosecuting attorney's office, we're probably looking somewhere upwards to two mil. What's the difference between two mil and two and a half mil. It's a very difficult decision this board's gonna have to make. And um, I know we're dancing around, people are gonna lose their employment. That is, that's hard. That's a hard decision that we have to make, but we have to have that balanced budget. And I have a neighbor at, at part of that road patrol. I think a lot of him, I think a lot of these people and the families that are gonna be impacted by a decision but there's no way we can get to a balanced budget without looking at the road patrol. And I don't know how we're gonna move forward on this. I think we need to move forward, but we have to do it in a much smarter way. Can we do it by uh, August? I don't know. I think before this meeting's over, we're gonna put a motion on the floor to seek a 2% grant to hire a public relations firm to survey the county. And if we don't get the 2% grant, we're not gonna have the money to move forward with it. I don't know, it's uh, it's one of those very difficult decisions that we have to make as elected officials and none of us wanna make it. I maybe spoke uh, out of order in terms of the cuts, but that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line, folks. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. It'll come back. Um, We'll just go ahead and move ahead to the corrections um, department in the sheriff's budget. Corrections, looking at just over a 5% decrease. I think that's mainly due, and I know we have some discussions to have, Sheriff. I got your message about uh, maybe food, right? We, maybe we cut, maybe we looked at the trend and cut food budget a little too, too tight. Please understand in this county, um, because it, it makes good economical sense. We have cooks in our correctional facility and we buy food and we prepare the food and serve the food because it makes good economical sense to do that um, rather than hiring a company to prepare the meals for us. So, I, I think beyond the economical sense, it does make good economic sense. Uh, but I've also, I've heard the sheriff say that those folks that are incarcerated don't have a lot to look forward to. So if they have a decent meal, it kind of keeps everybody uh, on a little more even keel. Uh, helps the the morale in there, yes. So besides the economic um, savings there, it also is just a good practice. Excellent point. I feel like overtime in the correctional facility was another thing that we cut. And please understand <clears throat> that's something we built back in, maybe not to the degree to degree to the degree that it is, but in 
budget meeting with sheriff contractually, people, you know, overtime is triggered. He's he's got to run that he's got to run that facility. So <clears throat> the overtime isn't you you can't just cut out all overtime in the in the correctional facility. So please understand that that was one place where I was built back in. Um, moving, moving down the list of changes, um, emergency management changing at this point, 90% reduction, although very robust conversations yesterday with Director Griffiths. The animal control budget um, reducing about 60%. Just to, I, just to sorry, just to back up to emergency management, they do have the 911 millage, so the general fund appropriation is not their only. Separate, uh, yes, yes. Unless you're looking at emergency management separate from the 911. Mm -hmm. Yes, nothing, nothing to do with uh, central dispatch 911 in this conversation at all. Yeah, but, um, I do, let's see, do Board of Public Works. Minor change there. I don't even know why we're discussing it, but we'll probably, you know, look at something like that to go back to a quarterly, quarterly. Um, and you didn't, I don't think you finished okay. with animal control. You just st stated the name. It didn't make a comment. Um, Tobin said something. Okay, thank you for bringing me back. Let's see, animal control, about a 60% reduction in <clears throat> that department. Um, we have not had a chance to meet with our partners at the shelter and definitely would want to, to meet with them before we, before we discuss what any, if any changes might be happening in that arena. I do want to let you know that um, it is out of the good graces of his heart that Sheriff oversees animal control. That is a function of the Board of Commissioners, actually, right? And so um, at any time, I suppose Sheriff can, can, can say he doesn't want that. Um, but uh, just understand it's not Sheriff chasing stray dogs if we don't have an, an, an animal control officer. That's us, if it matters. Drain commissioner um, reduction of 20%. I have to look to see what all that is made of. I know they took out the vehicle that they were um, utilizing. I think that had had a lot to do with um, expense, you know, and their restructure. They're taking the two positions into into one help it out. Oh, and, that, and removing the the intern, the paid intern. Um, that's another department that relied on those services. On these next few medical examiner, we did build a small increase. Um, we are looking to try and maybe do something different there. There's one of those areas of opportunity, um, but until we identify a new way to go, currently we're in a contract with, with Sparrow Health System for that. Community Mental Health Department doesn't change, doesn't change, doesn't change. A group by agreement a long time ago, the county pays annually. $216,300 to community mental health. And that doesn't change, doesn't change in the zero base. Child protection, that's $5,000 to DHHS. That doesn't change per agreement. We send them, I think that's where we send their money for, for them to attend trainings throughout the year. Veterans Affairs budget is coming down almost 45, 46%. I believe, Melissa, that does not jump, jeopardize the grant because we did look at the base year and we are maintaining from the base year. So that does not 
jeopardize the the grant, the County Veterans Service Fund grant. I have a question. We have mm -hmm. um, mental health. I know we have an um, annual appropriation to the district health department. Is that one of the placeholders under the county board? This, the, that appropriation is down here oh, in our down. operating transfers okay. out. Good eye. All right. Mm -hmm. That would be another one that can't go away. Human Rights Committee is another one we're suggesting. Perhaps they meet quarterly instead of monthly. Community Development Department, um, from current budget going down over 18%. This was uh, one, of the, one of the better budget meetings I think we had. Um, I really applaud Director Neeport. Um, such a longstanding employee to come to the table with fresh eyes. Um, it was very refreshing. I think everybody at the table learned a lot, including Director Neeport. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, so thank you. Um, I will say to, to the group, I hope you don't mind, that is another one where we thought we were pretty smart and couldn't we just do away with that department and contract up for it. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Reno, you should have been in these meetings. <laughs> you knew well, it's a, all the answers. It's, it's, it's a got. thing that pays for itself. Yeah. That's all I can Generates say. revenue. Is that it? No. Yep. yep, exactly. So um, great savings identified there to, um, to take advantage of of some, some new revenues, um, take advantage of some, some, some cuts and making it work. I think we need to talk about ROI, return on investment. I know in all of our conversations with all the departments, we really look at what they were bringing to the table as to what it could generate, not only to cover the cost of that particular position or that particular aspect, but also possibly generate income for the county. So again, we didn't want to cut our nose off to spite our face. We wanted to make sure that we gave them an opportunity to tell us, hey, this, this particular position or this particular activity generates this kind of money back to the county. So again, I hope that people understand that. We do, we're just not out here making draconian cuts and just hacking away with a machete. We we're very, very thoughtful about every single decision that we came to. And next department, um, this is our MSU Extension Department. After much deliberation, after much deliberation, MSU Extension remains in our zero-based budget. And this is not much change. So, you know, we thought about saving some funds and going to a halftime for each coordinator. Remember, MSU gives us that base agreement with a part time for each coordinator. And then from there, we buy up. We buy another 0.5 FTE of for each, and we, we have a support person there. So that's what, that's what this includes. We are. An agricultural county, so it is one of the very important parts of our economy, and so we definitely had to continue with the base support. They provide uh, technical support for dairy, for crops, many different uh, topics, and and 4-H. It's one of those, you know, we have scouting, we have 4-H. Those kids don't generally end up in trouble and get before the the sheriff's department or the courts or the, you know, it's like do, do you you have to keep supporting those positive aspects of county government. And when we were talking about return on investment, we weren't just talking about dollars. In this case, this investment into 4-H and MSU extension, the return on the return to us are uh, well-educated kids that have an opportunity to do things they might not otherwise get to do. And I think that, that was an important conversation that we had in this process was how important this really is to our community and to our children and to our future. I have to go with Commissioner Jelczynski that I had a conversation with one of the judges a year ago and he said he does with juvenile crime. He said, I don't think I've ever had a 4-H kid come through this court. So, exactly. so it is important yeah, to, to that point. keep them up. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> hey, register deeds. 
So some information um, I'm passing out regarding com combining offices of the county clerk and register of deeds. Please know this is not something that we can do this term, not something we're considering to do um, this term at the time has passed. But conversations are already happening for what would be term starting January 1, 2029. The thought process, again, we're not always right. Um, the thought process was you're combining a clerk and a register. You have one position instead of two. You're saving that. You, stu you still do have two chief deputies, right? You still have a chief deputy clerk. You still have a chief deputy register. Those don't change, um, but the one, one position goes away right, in that scenario. And, then, and it's done in a <clears throat> timeline so that those um, filing to run in that position would have ample notice, right? That it's going to okay. be both. That's why it's too late for this time. Mm -hmm. We would have had to start around the first of the year. And you have, you've got to really, it's not a lot of requirements. I think the timeline is listed on the back for this, this last go round. Um, really, public hearing is the big thing and you know, two thirds vote of the board. So again, something that the zero the, the zero base exercise identified as a possibility not built into the zero base. Or there's not time to do that. That's not a, appropriate for this term, but something to consider going forward. Okay. Oh. And also in terms of the practicality, if if we choose to move the AP and payroll to Madam Clerk's office, obviously she's got to get that all worked out. And then to add on responsibility for beyond that, uh, I don't think that would be appropriate at this time. I really don't. I think to give her time to work this through and get a system set up within the clerk's office for the AP and the payroll, and then down the road consider combining the two offices, I think would be uh, prudent and wise. The only thing I, 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 you know, I've seen this happen before in other counties, and um, the only thing is, um, I'm concerned about the uh, income from uh, passports that the register of deeds get. And there was some kind of way that it couldn't be done in county clerk. But uh, is that is that possible? You know, in a in a merger <clears throat> like this, is it possible? It had something to do with security or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to speak sure, on that? Sure. It it is other um, counties do that. You just have to have a separation of the offices. Mm, okay. Physically. Physically, a wall. That's good to hear. Thank you. Um, of course, we got plan to do this, but I'd like to see exactly how many counties have this mm -hmm. and have an we'll opportunity to do all of that. Yeah. And have an opportunity to talk yeah. to them before we move forward out of it. It's something yeah. we're looking at, but. We got time to, to look into. I'd be curious on, on how that transition worked. We don't know all the ramifications, plus minuses. But I, I mean, there are models out there. I retired from Clinton County, and they uh, combined theirs 12 years ago, and they're still uh, combined operations. So there's people we can reach out to to find out what are the pluses, what are the minuses, what do you give up in terms of service. So nothing that we're rushing into. We have another a few years to consider that. The board will have another couple. Mm -hmm. um, the, the last uh, item on here is operating transfers out. Again, that's another one where current budget is very inflated because of some one-time costs in the current budget. This year, we've got just over 6.5 million in operating transfers out. 3.6 million of that was our portion of the correctional facility, right? As it's being as it's being built, it's our portion that's not covered by the USDA loan. Um, so, if you will, just under three million dollars normally. If you go forward to the zero base, the things that I want you to understand what's built in the transfer out, this is normal. We, we transfer out to fund our friend of the court. Every year, zero base has $265,000 for that function. That's pretty normal. It has $18,900 in transfer out to, the, to fund our law library. It has $500,000 to fund the child care fund every year. 
right? These are those those placements. What were the placements? We built in to the zero base a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar annual payment to fund the asbestos abatement and rebuilding of the county building. As we sit here today, we do not have a not to exceed number on what that will cost, but we're working towards getting that. That'll be the first step in funding for that project. We've thrown around um, eight and a half million-ish estimates. We, we don't know where that's gonna land. But we know we're not going to pay it all from fund balance. We can't. We won't have operating cash left, likely to borrow. Once we have a not to exceed number, that starts that um, borrowing process. But sitting here today, we can't, we can't stick our heads in the sand, right? If we borrow for that, we have to build something in the zero base. We built $750,000 for 20 years is a, is a best estimate at something. We've got our 1.551 annual jail bond payment and the transfers out in the zero base. That's it's not going away. Um, we have Commissioner Jelizinski, um, our appropriation to the district health department of $458,898. We've got some smaller appropriation, $5,000 to, um, I love these old acronyms, FIA. Now DHHS, DHHS recycling. We do have in the zero base budget our appropriation to the MRF in the amount of three hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. We're funding community alternatives at the tune of thirty three thousand dollars. That's pretty standard. MIDC fund, that's our public defender appropriation, which doesn't change, hasn't changed, $240,306. And if Tom was sitting there, he'd yell out, and nine cents. <laughs> that totals in the zero base operating transfers out of just over $4.1 million. Does that include the uh, annual appropriation for Middle Michigan Development Corporation? It does. Not that is up in your board of commissioners new description line, I believe. Yes. Yep, and we did build that back in. Um, the appropriation to MMDC is contractual, with I believe a four percent increase built in. But we did build, that is built into the zero base. Thank you for pointing it out. It wasn't in transfers out, it's just in a different place. In there. Yeah, I think that's a wise move. They're out there working to retain employers, uh, to provide better educated employees, doing a lot of things that uh, uplift the uh, economy countywide, regional wide. Attracting businesses to it. I think we'd be cutting off our nose in spite of our face if we We'd, I think we'd have more loss than the few dollars that we spend. So all told, again, those one-time expenses that we are we're we're taking out for the the radio tower and the correctional facility are are twelve percent. If you take that out, this is um, just shy of four million dollars just shy of $4 million cut out of general funds. So I want to now hand out what that looks like in your forecast. So the the first the first year in your forecast are our audited fiscal 23 numbers and all that we have those. What a banner year. You all sat through that. 
audit presentation, right? We added over $8 million of fund balance and that's because we recognized over $9 million of ARPA revenue, right? Without ARPA, maybe I'll start somewhere. I just don't even go there without ARPA, but certainly it's been our saving grace. The next thing you might notice is our fiscal year 24 column, our current budgeted and that, that big number stands out, right? That we're at budget time last year, we adopted a budget using $5 million of fund balance. You don't, you don't keep doing that over time and that's why we're here. In fiscal 25, you can see there's a zero. There is no addition or reduction of fund balance because a zero based budget does not use fund balance. Okay, that, that's a hard concept for us here maybe, but your, your budget is balanced. So in a forecast, you're not, you're not adding or subtracting. So then why going forward in 26, 27, 28, 20, why, why are we seeing an addition or use of fund balance, right? Does that not make sense to you? I hope it doesn't make sense to you because I'm about to tell you what's built in to make that difference. If it makes sense to you, I need to go back a little bit, but so something else is in there, right? And this, uh, this is what, what it is. It's our, it's our MERS, it's our MERS pension. Yeah. You, you can't, you can't say here's the zero base and MERS isn't changing, right? It does. So let's take a look at uh, what MERS is doing. <clears throat> Most I know we never had a chance to talk about what I'm handing out right now, but I'm presuming that you, you went into that tool that MERS gave us a couple of years ago and, and put in the negative 12% year that MERS had, or maybe that's already figured in it's there already, now. It's already built in. Um, so that's probably what's driving us the most. Understand in June of every year, we get a valuation report from MERS, who um, is the fiduciary on our defined benefit or our true pension um, plan. That actuarial or valuation in June tells us what we're, what our annual required contribution will be two years in the future. And they don't change that. And then when they get the next year's experience, it's a calendar year of experience, they look at the experience and then they change that in the next valuation in June and they, they smooth things over time. So when we have a negative 12% year, um, like 2022, we don't take that hit all at once. They smooth it out over, I think, 10 years. And so every year we, we pay a, a little, it's kind of laddered, we pay 10 years of experience, really, whether that's up or whether that's down. So what, what I've handed out, that total re employer required contribution, that's the amount that we're going to have to send to MERS. In red, Melissa's done the math. Um, I believe the number on the left is probably total. The number on the right is only general funds. And so you can see the total across all funds plus general fund. That is the extra amount we're going to need to build in each year. 2027 is an anomaly. It's going down. Again, that's just because of their smoothing. And when they've had a, a, a good year, they smooth that out too. Okay. So any given year, we might be paying the good and the bad from 10 collective years. But in the zero-based budget, like we talked about in the Board of Commissioners Department, we've built in an extra 150000 that would be on top of the currently budgeted $3 million that we're sending to MERS. This is a closed system. This will, in the future, tail off, right? Right? Tail off. Negative 12% years don't help that tailing. And when MERS does well, we do well. I think we are now closer to $22 million unfunded. So I want you to understand that's what's driving this difference in your addition or use of fund balance is building these known amounts into what we may or may not fund to MERS. Can I make a comment real quick? Yeah, sure. Um, of course. I know some of the discussion was on the length of our millage requests, and that had to do with this MERS when it ended and their, their contribution. So, you know, why why did we do six years? Why was that going to end? And that was part of the get through 
this these projections and after this six <clears> years it will be pretty well hopefully ended unless their projections are bad again next mm -hmm. year but those are static numbers that you know they'll, they'll move around on us a little bit but that was some of the reasons why we were ending at six years and we were not going to have a continuing 2.5 so um, just kind of wanted to bring that up a little bit because that was because of this and because that number can change on us every year. So, I do want to talk about some assumptions built into the forecast. The forecast looks a little more condensed than normal because in the other forecast, we, we separated out salaries separated out benefits so we can do accelerators on those for mm -hmm. this experience or this this purpose we didn't we didn't have time for this exercise to go through that level of detail so we we lump things so understand there's a little more lumping than the normal forecast but on salaries and salaries and operations we gave a one percent increase wait no that there's no increase on all right so look a 1% on expenditures as a whole. So that does include salaries and operations. Great. 1% on expenditures as a whole, except for those, the debt payment. Remember that debt payment used to be just the 1.5 for the correctional facility, but now it's 2.3 because we're adding in $750,000 for asbestos abatement and rebuilding of the county building. That escalator does not is not on transfers out, but you can see it is on salaries and operations. Up top, the escalator that we used, I think we did a 1% on just a couple of those revenue items. You'll see charges for services has a 1% escalator. Um, intergovernmental has an escalator 1% once you get um, past the zero budget year. It looks a little inflated in the last two years because of all the ARPA. Um, but the big news, I think, is on taxes and special assessments. It's a 2% um, presumed accelerator on taxes. <clears throat> and that's helping to make the forecast work, right? You've got a 1% on your salaries and operations. You've got a 2% on your, your tax revenue, which is half of your revenue. Just real quick. Was, on those forecasts, did you consider the, the MRF facilities, the changes that could go, what would happen? I know those are pretty unpredictable, but as far as, as what we're putting in the appropriations. The appropriations, the appropriation is, is staying in this. It's not coming out because it would it would be in this number right here. Go, well, transfers, transfers out. Transfers yeah. out. Yeah, it's still, we didn't take it out of the tree. Not yet, it's in we there. We kept the same dollar amount. Mm -hmm. You kept the same, it, yep. Yeah. Okay, it's so still that those will definitely change either. Positive Somewhere, or, okay. Yes, yes, <laughs> either. Mm -hmm. There will be a, a change in that whole thing when that happens. I just wondered, because it's pretty hard to predict what it is. Sure. It'll either be, a, it will not be putting that money in there. Right. Or it'll be actually be on. Hopefully it'll be positive. Yeah. So, right. so I'm just, okay. just curious because that still is a big amount that comes out of the budget. So it was not in the zero base. It was added back in through discussion. Mm -hmm. okay. Certainly not mandated, but because of the because of the ongoing efforts with surrounding counties to regionalize that position, it was not felt that this was the time to pull the rug from the funding of it. And we've got got something good going here to self-support, hopefully. And we know that the community demands that service. Okay. Good question. Absolutely. Talk to me about this. I was looking at the uh, on reserve fund balance, and that is the fund balance that's generally available to fund our services. I'm sorry. I, I see uh, the audit amount, which says we had six uh, six point two million uh, from last year, drops down to just under a, a million uh, for the end of this year, fiscal year, but then jumps up to nine million. 
and remains pretty constant thereafter at you know around the nine million level. Why is that? Mm -hmm. What are we what are we gaining there? So so in the fiscal year 930 2024, remember we used or are projected to use 5.2 million of fund balance. So per audit numbers, they like to see that assigned. That assigned number is in that 10 million. You see the the breakout, mm -hmm. the 10 million of assigned. That is is once this year is done. That 5.2 is spent, it's done. It no longer has to be up there in the assigned. We still have the same amount of fund balance. It's just in different pockets, if you will, different different areas. After spending 5 million in the current year. Yes. Starts 20, ends at 15. Yeah, we, we, started the year with, we started this year with 20 million, spending 5 million of fund balance. Well, I'm not talking it, about total fund balance because that's not all available for the general fund use. We have some that are dedicated and you can't touch mm -hmm. those. And um, we have some committed, but the unreserved portion of the fund balance shows a $9, nine million availability in 2025. It, it just it seems like it was a large increase, and, but it then remains consistent. And I know the rule of thumb is you have about 20%, 20 to 25% uh, in your fund balance. And you really don't want to go uh, below that. And I, I think also we probably need to add a little bit more to our uh, working capital, working capital, mm -hmm. so that we don't ever have to borrow uh, to operate county government. Since our revenues don't come into the third quarter, we need to have that money to fund government operations until then. But uh, I, I was just surprised to see the um, the nine million. On, uh, on reserve fund balance at the end of uh, fiscal year 2025. I think we think a lot alike because I had to have Melissa talk me through that too because it didn't look right to me on paper. But let's 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 start here. Let's let's start in fiscal 25 with the assigned fund balance. Right, it's a little over five million dollars. And let's forget about the past. Let's just think about our fund balance and what, what would we need to assign $5 million for, right? You already, oh. you already talked about $2 million in working capital. That's what we normally set aside right now. And we've talked that might not be enough. We might have to increase that, right? We learned at audit time about compensated absences, about the amount of money in our audit that we set aside in our general fund in case everyone quit on the same day and we had to pay out their accrued and unused time. Right. That's a, an amount on our books. It was over $1.1 million in fiscal 23 audit. Remember that? We also have to assign the, the dollars that we're going to use to pay our debts, right? That $1.5 million for the correctional facility, the $750,000 that we're thinking for asbestos. At 2.3, we have to assign that in our fund balance so nobody goofed up and, and spends that on something else, right? We have to assign that. We're already over $5 million, but also we have a couple of leases that say we have to assign some of our fund balance for improvements at the uh, the health department and at 911. These are things we have to assign. And so we're already to $5 million in a normal year, right? And then remember, our auditors told us the other thing that we have to assign fund balance for is when we adopt a budget and we say we're going to use fund balance, we actually have to assign the fund balance to use. Otherwise, it might get used for something else. Right? So what did we use in fund balance in the current year? In our adopted budget? Over $5 million. So in the current year, that's why our assigned is over $10 million. Because we have the $5 million normal that we have to assign for all those things, plus the five million we said we needed to balance the current budget. So we're not diverting it to cover that anymore. Correct. Okay. Does that make a little it does. better sense of on paper? It looks mm -hmm. terrible. What what did you do with that? It's no longer has to be assigned because in fiscal 25, we're not saying we're gonna use any fund balance to balance the budget. That's a great Thank question, you. sir. Great question. Thank you for that. Great question. question. So at the end of this forecast, at least on paper, I, I know you guys aren't used to seeing that, but a positive number doesn't have parentheses around it. So that's that's what you're looking at through time. 
That's what you charged finance with doing. Make this forecast. Give us a balanced budget to make the forecast work, mm -hmm. to make us yeah, sustainable over time. That department list that shows you where those reductions occur the two. is what has is is what yeah. is what our recommendation is to mm -hmm. making that forecast viable. Most are there other things, other assumptions in the forecast? Anything I've lost over? Anything you want to add? Anything? You... I would just say, going in my tenth year on the board, I know we've always ended up in the black. But that's because we dumped in fund balance, delinquent tax funds, uh, delinquent tax funds uh, when they were available. But I can't ever remember we ended up with a balanced budget with just that year's revenues and expenditures. And we've worked really hard to accomplish that. Um, I know there's been times that we've put in 10% of our budget by utilizing our savings and various things. And that just, we found out was not sustainable. And so, you know, this goes a long way to correct it. This is not the uh, end product. I mean, we're still talking and then maybe uh, we have four other commissioners that are getting this information some first time uh, and haven't been participating in this. And so there may be some changes moving forward, but if we have to take money from one place and put it elsewhere, I mean, that, those are things we have to make, but I hope the whole board is committed to coming to a balanced budget on an annual basis so that we know what fund balance we have for whatever improvements or challenges uh, we face in the future. I think we, we as a finance committee and administration, we talked about giving the four of you time. This is a lot. I mean, oh my gosh. I can't tell you how many hours we've spent with <laughs> department heads and electeds uh, turning over every leaf, looking at every single opportunity. I mean, it was multiple, I mean, 50, 60 hours that we've spent in, in the process mm -hmm. from start to finish. So I, we can't possibly expect you to be able to wrap all this up in, in a short period of time. So again, we, we're suggesting that you do meet with Melissa and go through line by line what those look like so that you know what we talked about and then come back with things that you'd like to see either put back in or taken out. But again, our ultimate goal in this was to create a zero base, a zero balanced budget. So um, we want you to have that time. And we, we, we chose to do this in this time frame because obviously we want to have respect for the employees who do work for Isabella County. We want to give them time. We don't want, the last thing we want is for them to hear, like you said, here in a public meeting, you know, we're not doing the pink slip route. We're going to have individual conversations with those folks if we choose to adopt a zero based balance, a zero based or the zero budget or balanced budget. We are going to sit down with each one of those individuals and have a conversation with them prior to it being public. <clears throat> okay, that's that's my commitment to our employees. We owe them that. So that's why we started this process in this time frame. But we do want to give you the time to review, have questions, and we can come back together and, and work through this a final draft of our budget. So because we're looking down the road, we know that they're probably going to be employees impacted. And so we do have a budget schedule, but we're gonna have to advance that budget schedule so that we can adopt the budget much earlier than September, maybe, maybe even in May. So we need to finish up the discussion, put a, a proposed budget on the table for board consideration so that if there are employees that are gonna be losing employment over this, they have time to find other employment. One of, you know, it's like I said, it's, it's a hard decision to let an employee know that uh, we no longer have need of their services. Loyal employees that have given time and talent to the county for years perhaps in some cases, but we need to, for themselves and for their families, we need to give them as much time possible. Uh, completely agree. 
Um, I think we need to let Madam Administrative Controller chime in on whether we can move that budget uh, process up that far. Uh, can we do the entire budget by May or can we identify the cuts and let folks know by May without the entire budget actually being in place? I, what, what so you maybe you, you saw maybe you saw me write it down. Um, I, I know that the, you have to adopt your budget at an annual meeting of the year and generally that is in September. So I want to look at the and ask legal. Does it have to be September, right? Because it, it, it always has been, and I don't want to sit here and say, oh, yeah, we can do it anytime between now and then. Mm -hmm. There's some statutory things we'll want to make sure of, mm -hmm. but I think to, to your point, I think if nothing else, we can do the work so that the fiscal 25 budget is known, right? What what I can do the presentation for you in May if you want in, in that so that, mm -hmm. so that you know. But I think probably would send the most clear message if you could adopt it earlier. It, it actually makes sense, right? Because then it's, um, I don't want to say hearsay, I don't want to say empty, but if you adopt the budget, it's solid. Yeah, it's, it's what it is. is. You can yeah. amend it after October 1st, but that's saying this is what we believe in, this is what we're adopting. Normally, we've adopted a final draft by the end of August, the first part of September. That is not enough time uh, no. To, no. to let people know that their position will be effective. So we need to move that. It's yeah. why we built this conversation into to the budget, to the budget calendar this year. Madam Administrator, can you speak to uh, things that we're going to do for the employees. I know we want to make sure that uh, we're taking care of them if, if they're leaving. And to EAP, sure. so, Michigan Works. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that, that uh, HR is working on currently is we reached out to MERS um, to ramp up education and make sure all the employees have contact information for MERS. If, if whether they're a DB or and considering retirement, whether they're a defined contribution and, and concerned about vesting or what their options are, um, there are a lot of municipalities who have MERS to MERS service, and you can you know continue building that that service credit or even that that DC vesting service with with other employees employers sometimes who have MERS. Um, so we're we're bringing our MERS rep in. We're bringing in 44 North to make sure that um, people understand uh, Cobra, how Cobra works, what what it costs, um, and, and how how um, how they have a right to Cobra. Uh, we're bringing in the EAP. Um, we've let them know that there may be layoffs and uh, coming forthcoming, and so. Um, once those are known, those names will actually be shared with our EAP so that if those folks are calling our EAP or Employee Assistance Program, um, we'll be able to um, identify why that person might be calling and, and do some wraparound services for what they might have available. And our friends at Michigan Works um, will help us as well in, in terms of um, marketing, okay. marketing skills. Thank you. If there's other um, other entities that we need to bring in that I didn't mention or we haven't thought of, please please let us know. We want to be we want to be ready. We want to have resources available. So would this be the time to put a motion on the floor for the travel two percent? I think it would be fine. You know, good discussion. I think to have we kind of missed the boat. Okay. I missed that. I missed that opportunity talking with the board at the last meeting where you had all of your two percent applications that you were vetting. These meetings have kind of led to a little more conversation about why aren't we using the you know that that uh, potential funding stream and and of course led to the conversation I think you're about to have of what what next. This is not. Yes, this makes our forecast work. But does this make our county work? Does this work for our county? So if it doesn't, then I think I think we need to answer the question: What's what's the board willing to do going forward? With that, I'm going to put a motion on the floor that we authorize the county administration to apply for a two percent grant in an amount sufficient to hire an outside consultant 
to uh, survey the county residents on the possible request for a public safety millage and give us a recommendation in terms of timing on that millage. Support. And moved and supported. Um, any further discussion? I, I would just say again, it's our best, it's our best and only hope to, you know, take a look at a public safety millage down the road. All we know right now is the loud, clear message we had in the last uh, ballot request is that people do not want to pay more property taxes. And if that's the sentiment, we're going to have to live with it. None of us want to uh, eliminate road patrol. It's the dollars that are, that are there that we need to balance our budget. Um, and I hold out hope that we get the uh, funding from the tribe and that uh, we get some kind of a positive response uh, from from the, any consultant that does the survey. I, I would think I would just want to add to that request uh, besides just surveying, uh, I, I would think uh, I would want them to help with education uh, and hire the drive, the campaign. Campaign, yeah. Um, campaign is that's going to be critical. Uh, another thing that'll be critical is community partners. We can put education pieces out there. We can't put anything out there that says vote yes. Uh, we need outside monies to do that. Um, I think it was outside monies that <laughs> brought it down. Correct. Right. Uh, Commissioner Jelzinski said we did our best on the last one. I I, I don't know. We could do better, I think. Um, but I think the feeling was we didn't want to jeopardize our renewal in August, our 6.61. Um, maybe uh, another request for public safety millage in August doesn't jeopardize that. Maybe that's something a consultant can help us decide. Uh, if it, if we feel it doesn't, well, it sure would be an opportune time to get it on there because then you can levy the money for, for next year. Otherwise, we wait a year. We've got a year with, without that. What other villages are going to be coming up in August? I know there's some. So you'll, talk. this board will decide that, right? Because they'll have to come to you for ballot language. Um, in terms of the countywide millages, I believe that Parks and Recreation renewal of their 0.35 and the uh, ICTC renewal there. So board commission. Don't believe so. So at that point, we would have our renewal request and three other millages that were all county, all on the same ballot. Mm -hmm. And our renewal request, remember, on the, the way it is on the ballot is tied to the township's renewal, tied to the highest mm -hmm. Any further discussion on the motion uh, to allow the administrator to apply for a 2% grant uh, for an outside consultant to work with us on a public safety millage? And I presume you mean for that to be a critical category, you know, how you prioritize your... I would this definitely is a prioritize that as critical. I wouldn't think we'd be talking about it right now if it was anything else, but I wanted to clarify. Sure. Okay. Any other discussion on that? Just one second. Yes. Um, yeah. Does it have to be the two percent? A two percent grant from the second tip no, on the no, no. We're not talking two per, two no. mills. We're talking about a two percent no. grant for the consultant. Yeah, we're not talking. Yep. About um, no, I understand that, but I'm okay. just talking big picture. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to go out for it. What do we have any wiggle room of what that percentage is? I'm yeah, at, I'm looking at all these numbers for the time. Right. right. <clears throat> um, I think we've had some talks with the sheriff and the mm -hmm. prosecutor, and I felt like 1.7, 1.8 kind of restores their functions. See, that's what I'm thinking. 
I mean, it's a, a number that's more feasible. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Luckily, we have some time for that, but uh, Clerk Lux, you may be able to know, you might know the date off the top of your head, but I think the August, maybe May 14th is, is when the August, if something was going to be on the August ballot, the language has to be to you by... I'm going to have to look up here. Thank you. When? Sorry to put you on the spot. She's checking. Oh, I think that's something the consulting could... Um work with us on who is what would be a, an acceptable request mm -hmm. to put out. Tough there. thing there is if, if we're doing the 2%, then that the award of the 2% comes back in May. All right. Yes. Yeah, so we, we apply now. We know in May if it's funded. I think language has to be to the clerk mid-May for an August election. May 14th by 4 p.m. That's a Tuesday. That's the ballot, that would be the deadline for the ballot wording of the proposal. Qualify. And so you'll that's why you'll see on your agenda, you'll likely see Parks and Rec come in April, right? With their ballot range, you'll see ICTC come in April and you'll see ballot language for your 6.61 .6 renewal. If you don't, please recognize me. That's pretty important. I need that. Yeah. So we could go out for an RFP for consultant based on contingent, based on funding. You could. I don't. You don't have time for an RFP, yeah. sir. No. Respectfully. No. We we that committee that looked at the millage for some time. You know we. We vetted some PR firms. I know we chose not to go with them because we didn't want to be chastised for spending money we didn't have. And I think quite arguably, it, one could argue it, it may have been a waste <clears throat> dollars at that, with, with, given the, the election results. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I do need a roll call, though, on that 2% due to yep. it being monetary. Yep. And okay. I think we're ready for that. Any other discussion before the clerk does a roll call? Okay, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Hutchinson? Yes. Commissioner Embry? Yes. Commissioner Dalzinski? Yes. Commissioner Ingler? Yes. Commissioner Marino? Yes. Commissioner Sweeney? Yes. Commissioner Hope? Yes. Seven eyes, zero nays. Motion passed, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Clerk. <laughs> Anything else? That's all I've been. That's all I've been doing. That's all, that's, that's all we've been. been. That's, that's all, all we've been, been doing. Working hard, man. Oh, man. We've been working hard, and I will say, Administrator Controller Frost and uh, Deputy Administrator Frankquist, they have given us everything we've asked for, and they have worked tirelessly, long hours. Um, I appreciate them both. Uh, like Commissioner Embry said earlier, the move to an administrator from a controller type government has nothing to do with your job performance, has everything to do with setting us up in the future, because we don't know who's going to be sitting here, but getting those processes in place where every year we're having balanced budgets and have a healthy uh, fund balance. So, yes, sir. And I just want to say, when you're getting reports at 10 o'clock at night, you know somebody's still on the on the job, uh, feeding information. And anytime I have a question, I don't care if it's nine o'clock. If I don't get uh, Administrator Frost right right away, I said, call me. I stay up late, and she calls me. So mm -hmm. you know, it's a it's a thankless job. And we have two, three, we have an administrative staff. That is just really great. And we do appreciate that. Thank you. Mr. Engler. Yeah, I do appreciate the Finance Committee giving us a couple of days to digest through this. I know our timeline is very tight. And we'll take advantage of that. And ask questions with the administration, get back to you as soon as possible. So. Yeah, you you really should sit down with the administrator and the deputy yeah. administrator and have them go through line by line everything that we talked about, and then you can get deeper into the weeds of it. That yeah, but, already. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. You have a comment? I just I know this has been a, a very trying uh, 
exercise <laughs> for for us, members of the finance committee and administration. Again, I understand we're affecting people's lives, not just their employment, but their lives and the lives of the members of our community. And I know we, we may get pushed back on the decisions that we've made, but we made them to the best of our abilities. And I respect people who have a difference of opinion and we'll gladly listen to those. I know the four members of the board that are just getting the first brush at this, I, they may come back with things that we may need to adjust and change over this course of this process. And uh, I, that's one of the reasons we developed this process so that not only could you have say in this budget uh, discussion, but also our electeds and our department heads. I think that was a very important uh, component of this process is to involve them so that they could see exactly what we're doing. We, I know we've been really working towards being transparent, being open, being honest. And I think through this process, I'm hoping that uh, residents of Isabella County will see that we meant what we said, that we were going to be, try to be transparent, that we were going to try to do the right thing. Again, maybe not. this may not be 100% right what we're putting forth, but in my opinion, uh, it is a best effort on our part. And I have to, again, commend mm -hmm. Chairman Hope, Vice Chairman Jalazinski, Madam Administrator, Madam Deputy Administrator, and all of our uh, electives and uh, department heads for being a part of this. Appreciate it. Okay, I think before we move to general public comment, I want to ask the department heads, elected officials, mm -hmm. if any of you uh, would like to chime in. Um, please, please feel free. I don't need to put you on the spot, but if, uh, yeah. if anything that. <laughs> I'll chime in. Uh, <laughs> First of all, uh, we sat through that meeting the other day, and I don't think I can make myself any clearer about taking over the accounting again. Um, we bailed the county out several times in the past, and I thought I made it very clear that um, I'm not willing to do that anymore. Um, what, what's it going to fix? Uh, just because somebody can do the accounting and put the numbers in doesn't mean that it's going to fix all the decisions that are being made at you guys' level. Um, they, the numbers are the numbers. And if they're doing such a great job, why are we changing? I mean, we had two accountants. We hire a $335 an hour CPA. Um, and we're still getting rode up in the audits every year. We've been getting rode up the last 10 years. Nine years, I think. The 10th year going 14. I helped the accountant do the budget that year. We've pulled uh, delinqu we've pulled um, fund balances every year except for one, and that's by taking the delinquent tax revolving funds, the two point three million dollars we've had in our self insurance funds. Uh, we now do indirect costs where you know we go ahead and put out a millage to um, for the Commission on Aging for the Parks and Rec. And then we turn around and take some of that money back, uh, kind of backdoor the, the millage proposal. Um, I, 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 I can't make myself clear enough. Uh, as I said in the meeting the other day, the civics lesson is that it goes back to the clerk. If you do not want to have a control ship, it goes back to the clerk. And if the clerk wants to hire two accountants and an outside accountant, I mean, that, that's fine. If she wants to do that, that's fine. But at this point in time, uh, I don't see what it's going to fix uh, in any of the decision making that's that's going on um, by just dumping back onto the county treasurer. Uh, I came over here in 1991 uh, to do the accounting. And the first thing that happened was uh, the county board pulled controllership and took the accounting out of my office. Uh, three years and four months later, it was back in my office because the controllership failed miserably. Uh, we went ahead and did it for five or six years, and the county board decided they're going to pull controllership. 
So they pulled it out of my office. And here we are, 10, 9, 10 years later, uh, failing miserably again. I want to put it back in my office. I'm at the twilight of my career. I'm not going to be here next year. So if you're doing it for personnel-wise, that's one thing. Uh, I'm not going to be here. I'm not sure that my chief deputy would want it, um, but you need to talk to her about that. So I, you know, I would think that, you know, we would have conversations a little more than, hey, we're going to do this and then spring it on it here at a, a goal setting session. Thank you. Anyone else? Departments before we move on to general public. All right, general public comment. Anyone for general public comment? See anyone? Anyone online? Now would be the time to raise your hand. Lots of folks online. I see no hands raised. It is star nine to raise your hand if you're on the phone. Give me just a second. Did have a caller earlier that dropped off. Okay. See them back. All right, uh, we'll move on to announcements. Commissioners, any announcements? I just want to thank everybody for coming here today on a Tuesday afternoon. Anything else? All right, is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Support. We moved and supported. All those in favor say aye. 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 Very positive.